Uh, obviously, you're all aware of um, the accreditation decision by our commission uh, that was sent out to all of you via email a couple days ago. Uh, you got a copy of the press release that went out. You also received a copy of the actual letter from the commission. And you also received the actual written report that was completed in December uh, by the visiting team. So today, we're going to just review that and discuss a bit about the actions um, taken by the commission and what it means to us. And uh, I'll be and share with you as much as we know at this point, because obviously the focus is on what is our board going to do uh, in as much as right now um, it's, uh, it's a mixed ble um, message to it. We, on the one hand, if you read the report, it said, um, uh, we did our job at the college, and the issues that we had to report on have been addressed. And the, on the other hand, the issues that were identified at the district level uh, and with the board, and there are two things going on there. It's not all just the board. It's also the district processes that have to be addressed, even though they, were, they made some progress. And uh, th they weren't satisfied with that. And so now we have to deal with it, and all three colleges were put on probation, not just us. So as I understand it, more parks folks are pretty livid about all of this because they were okay, and now they went from that to on probation as a result of the action. So, all right. Well, uh, just by way of reminder, we had um, submitted our self-study in August of 2010, and then we had that comprehensive site visit uh, that October. And we had uh, teams of about uh, seven, about seven, eight people were here talking to everybody. They talked to the district and did all that. And based on that, they made their recommendations, of which you recall um, there were seven Oxnard College recommendations, and we had to report on five of those seven. And that's what this is about. The other two will be still uh, discussed and addressed, but it'll come in 2013 when we have our mid-year uh, review that we all colleges have to submit. Accreditation is for six years. And the, uh, all colleges must submit a mid-year review of where they are in the progress, whether they're okay or not. So that would take us into 2013. That's when those other two will also be addressed. There were seven district recommendations as well. And then... Um, we had to be able to provide a follow-up report uh, this last October, which we all did. And we prepared very uh, well for it. We've been working since we got that original report to address the issues uh, that had been identified. And at this point, I'm just going to congratulate everybody here because that took a college-wide effort to make sure that we did that and taking care of the issues and, and faculty I really appreciate all your support and working with us to make things happen. And all the support staff that did their jobs. So this was really a collective effort. And when I first read the draft report, I was so pleased to see that they had recognized that. And they, and as Erica will go over with you, what they had found. Um, and then they followed that up with a site visit in November, after we submitted our report last October. And so the commission took action now uh, this January. Uh, and in the as the letter indicates, uh, we got the notification um, this week that uh, what the findings were, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But by uh, before we get into that, I'm going to ask Erica to come on up, and she's going to review with you the uh, recommendations and what the team findings were based on the report. Okay, good morning. Yeah. All right, so, I, so I, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I know that you all, when you got the email from Dr. Duran, you all opened up all three documents and especially read the December 8th document and the one that came February 1st. So this is just a review, right? Nod your heads, all right, that's great. Tell my teaching voice is on here. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that, 
you know, Monday was an interesting day because we were made aware of the decision, got the letter, read it, read the report, and almost, almost instantly, I started bumping into faculty and staff, and there was a lot of anger. I can't believe this has happened. We did so much work. All that work we did was for nothing. And um, immediately, I launched into that it wasn't for nothing, actually. We did a good job. Because if you read that letter, if you read that report, it's very clear that we did what we were supposed to do. Every single thing we were asked to address, and remember, we were only told a year ago about all of this information, and we needed to do everything in time to write a report for October 15th. We did it. We addressed five major concerns. So this is, while it's never great to be on probation, it's really great for our college because you all did the right thing. You all did the work. We worked together. You know, I may have been beating people over the head about a few things, but for the most part, everybody came together, did the work, and so we have a lot to be proud of, and I just, I can't emphasize that enough. You know, again, being on probation, not great, but it's really not about us, and I think we have to focus on that. Now, again, this is a review, because I know you've all read this closely, but if you look on uh, recommendation number one, it was very clear we'd fully addressed uh, that recommendation, and basically what that talks about is the fact that we took the recommendation that we needed to have defined goals that were germane to our college and in line with the district strategic goals, but we needed our own goal. So, uh, so recommendation number one, we met that because we, as you know, there was a college goals task force that the president held, and we looked at the last chapter of the educational master plan. We identified four major goals. We talked about them. We vetted them as a community process. And we did what we were supposed to do. And along the way, according to the evidence that was presented and our accreditation follow-up report, we proved that we had linked our planning process together with what our goals are and also what the strategic goals are for the district. So yay for us. We did it, number one. Recommendation number three, again, we fully address this, and we have the faculty to thank for that because you all stepped up to the plate um, with the help of the Learning Outcomes team that became a participatory governance committee last year. Faculty came together. They did program assessment calendars for all the courses in their programs. They started an assessment cycle, learned how to use Illumin, also did program level SLOs, the college as a whole did institution level SLOs, and we linked them all together. And as all of you know, um, because I know the department chairs have spread this news to you, we're doing the uh, program level SLO assessments this spring, and we're utilizing Illumin as a tool. And so we, one of the reasons we did well on this is because we did the work, which is what we needed to do. And if you will recall in the original um, recommendation, the last sentence is, this must be a faculty-led effort, and it was. And so yay to the faculty. Um, okay, number four, program review. Oh, yes. Great, thank you very much. Now, as you know, what we have been talking about for the last, I don't know, we've been hitting everybody over the head for the last few years about, we have to be at proficiency by fall of 2012, 2012. And so, and the, the uh, commission has tried to help colleges understand what that means, what does proficiency mean. They've revi refined the rubrics that they send out to us and say, make sure you meet these rubrics. Um, I was at an ACCJC training on Tuesday because I'm gonna be serving on a visiting team in March. And at that training, the commission staff talked a little bit about the fall 2012 deadline and interestingly enough, we've seen it written as fall 2012. Well, for the first time, the way it was written at the ACCJC was really fall 2012 slash spring 2013. 
And um, I think the reason there's been a revision to that date isn't that we don't have to have met it by fall 2012. It's that the way that we're going to be assessed as to how we've met it is that every year I, as the accreditation liaison officer, have to file an annual report with the ACCJC that's due on June 1st. Um, the commission staff didn't come out and say it, but it appeared from the dialogue that the way we're going to report on whether or not we've met proficiency in fall 2012 is going to be in the form of that annual report that is due in spring 2013 that where they, they currently ask questions about how many of your courses have SLOs, how many of your courses have had assessments. That's why, of course, I've been pounding everybody for whatever they have. Um, I think those questions are going to be refined a little bit more in the 2013 report. So as we get more information about what, the, what form that reporting takes, I'll let you know. But I thought it was very significant the other day that that fall 2012 had a slash, and now it's fall 2012 slash spring 2013. So that gives us a little more time. Um, and it's great news for us, especially because we don't have to write a follow-up report for this coming October, so that's good. Um, so then getting back to number four, a recommendation number four, uh, basically we had fully addressed this recommendation related to program review because the visiting team felt that we had strengthened it we had made it more rigorous. We had linked it with college and um, district, with the college and district planning, budgeting planning cycle. We had identified a multi-year process versus an annual process. We had provided greater um, data to faculty. And so they were very happy with the progress we had made there, which again is why we fully addressed that recommendation. Recommendation number five uh, had to do with total cost of ownership principles, and the visiting team reviewed the planning and budgeting process, and it reviewed the forms that we use for resource allocation, and a variety of documents that demonstrated that as we were doing budgeting, we were now also incorporating total cost of ownership principles into that budgeting and, and linking it back to our program review. So that's why that was satisfied. And then number six was also satisfied um, because we put a process into place last year to ensure that all evaluations were happening as they were supposed to. So from an administrative perspective, what we did was create an evaluation matrix, and each dean or supervisor had to complete one to make sure that classified evaluations were happening in a timely manner. But then we also started a very laborious process of going back to see when faculty should be evaluated because there hadn't been, a lot had fallen through the cracks. Um, so the, the visiting team was very happy to see that. We had the records up on SharePoint that they could see to make sure that we were keeping those matrices up to date. They did, however, in the report, which again, you've all read, so this is just a reminder, they did say that they were concerned that this was a college process of managing and monitoring when these evaluations take place. Um, because from their perspective, it was something that uh, the district could do in an electronic format. And specifically, uh, Banner has capability to do that. So the chair of the visiting team just suggested, you know, we do it with Banner at my college. So, and he left it at that. So that was the, that was the most important piece, those five recommendations. Um, and you notice there are two missing, number two and number seven, and the reason is because we don't have to report on those until we write our midterm report that is due um, October 2013. So, yay for us. Um, now, going on to the next part of it, um, the report, starting on page, is starting on, I think, page 10 or 11, they talk about their, the visiting team's review of the district recommendations and how they had addressed them. In particular, on page 11, they, um, I think I'm supposed to go forward, is that right? In particular, on page 11, they do talk about their concern about the level of progress and the varying interpretations as whether or not progress was being made. Because remember, just like here on our campus where visiting team members 
interview people, they review evidence. That also happened at the district level. So they talked to a lot of different people about the district processes in place and wanted to get a sense of, are we making progress? And if you read the report, what it says is, some people think you're making progress, other people don't think you're making progress, and so they pointed that out as a concern. On recommendation number one, as you can see, they felt like it had been partially addressed, but they didn't seem feel that it was in that the district was in full compliance. And what that specifically references is what's known as functional mapping. And that means what's the difference between what a college does and a district does? And how is it that college decisions or college processes flow up to the district and back down? So what the visiting team was hoping for was a was a clearer development of a functional map. So they said, okay, you're kind of on the way there, but you need to do a little more work on that. On the second one, uh, there were two parts, as you can see. They felt that the calendar, um, that the district calendar issue had been addressed. But on the second one, they felt as though the district had started to work on policies and procedures that work in conjunction with the colleges. Um, if you will recall from the original report, it talked about being concerned that some of the district policies were maybe getting in the way of how we do our business here on the college campus. And so they felt like the uh, district had started to try to address this, but needed to make some more progress on how they were going to address it. You know, looking at things like how does purchasing occur? How do HR forms get signed? Who starts what process? So they saw that some, some things had been put in place, some processes had been put in place, but there was still some confusion as to who starts what process, who gets to decide what, so that's something they, they also felt like the district needed to keep working on. On uh, recommendation number three, as you can see, progress has been made, but it's only partially been addressed. And what that, what that refers to is that the district needs to, um, the district and board basically need to define outcomes measures and really figure out what their CQI process is for strategic planning. Again, they started that process. As you will recall, a couple of years ago, the board had six overall goals. They've now brought it down to three goals, but it's still not clear how that strategic planning process is going to be gone for, you know, is going to go forward and how our CQI principle is going to be taken, put into place to make sure that they're evaluating those strategic planning objectives. So again, they saw, they saw that the district was on the way, they just needed to do a little more work on that. Um, number four, partially addressed. Basically, this has to do with communication. The fact that there are lots of instances where there are things happening at the district that are not getting communicated to the college and vice versa. So the question is, how does the district establish a communications plan and a communications path where what's happening there is really gets out to the colleges, people know what's going on. Um, and in particular, what they were concerned with was whether or not the district was adequately assessing the concerns of their constituencies. And their constituencies come in many forms. You know, they did have a citizens advisory council meeting in the fall and got a lot of great feedback from the citizens group. But the question that's raised in the report is, are, are, does the district have a process in place to get the kind of feedback they need from the staff, from the faculty, and if changes need to be made, how are they gonna communicate those changes? How are they gonna make sure that people all know that the district's going in a particular direction? So communications was, is an issue. And again, on that, partially addressed, they can see some of the pieces in place, but not enough of it to feel like it had been adequately addressed. Um, number five, considerably addressed, this is good, um, this is a, you know, like a B plus, maybe. Um, the idea there was that the board had, um, the board needs to complete the self-assessment process, their own self-assessment process. Um, and they, what the visiting team saw was that the board had put a process in place, 
but that as all you faculty out there who we've been pounding on those measurable objectives, that they hadn't really put enough measurable objectives into place as part of that self-assessment process to make it as, um, to make it as impactful or, as, or to provide the results that would meet this particular standard. So that was another piece of the puzzle. Boards on the way there, they've done the self-assessment, um, especially after their board retreat in June and subsequent board meetings, but how are they gonna measure themselves? So this coming June, when they do their next board retreat, how are they going to assess what they did last year and how they go forward this year? And that's what the commission wanted to see, or the visiting team. Number six was partially addressed. Um, basically, this was also looking at identifying decision-making processes, this kind of gets back to number one, to recommendation number one, and wanting to have the district identify a more clear, a clearer picture of how decisions get made. That again, they were trying to identify that, but without the functional mapping in place, and um, without, without those measurable objectives, without all of these things in place, it wasn't clear how decision making was happening in our district and was there, and again, getting back to number four and issues about communication, was, uh, is communication happening that can lend itself to decision making processes as well? So that involves looking at the committee structure in the district level, seeing, you know, is there appropriate input? And if there is appropriate input, how is information coming out of those going out to the group and making sure people are informed about how decisions are made. Um, number seven, yay, fully addressed, yay. Um, <laughs> and that had to do with board develop, professional development. And essentially, you know, we all, we talk about faculty professional development, we talk about staff professional development. Well, it also exists for the board as well. You know, it's important that when new board members are elected that they go for trustee training so they know what the role of the trustee is and that they go to conferences such as the league and other things throughout the year to understand what their role is and what the state is expecting of community colleges and how they're gonna meet those expectations and really represent the district and their constituency the best they can. So the visiting team was very pleased to see all of the professional development that had happened in the previous year but they just wanted to make sure that the board put together some sort of timeline or some sort of plan to demonstrate how they were gonna sustain that professional development in subsequent years. Because as you know, you know, when you get told, okay, we've got a problem here, it's really easy to say, okay, I'll go to this conference, I'll go to this training, I'll do this, I'll do this, which is great for the immediate year, but then what's the plan going forward? How often would a trustee member go to this conference or go up to, the, uh, up to Sacramento for a chancellor's office? whatever. So, um, so that was a good one. They did meet that, but, they, but the commission really wanted to see, so what's the plan going forward? Oh, did I? I'm sorry, what? The special concern Oh, okay, I see it. About Oh, right, the qu faculty qualifications, that's right. The, uh, sorry about that, it was underneath my little blue notes. Um, as you know, when we wrote our, uh, when we wrote our follow up report, we had to report out on the MQ audit that the district had conducted last year, and um, the, this, the follow, the team, made a comment in their initial report to the commission and the commission highlighted that in their action letter to us last year saying we want to know the outcome of that audit report to make sure that number one the what caused the audit findings have been addressed and number two that you have gone through a process to make sure that not only were they addressed but this is how this is not gonna happen again. And the um, visiting team felt like that had been addressed. So that was good for us as well because it was pointed out in our report. Um, 
again, which you've all read, that they questioned why we hadn't made more mention of it in our own self-study. But the reason we hadn't was because it was a district process, not our process, but it did impact our faculty. So they were pleased with the fact that the district had addressed that and we seemed to be fine um, with that. Thank you. Okay, so here's our timeline. January, the, board, the uh, commission met second week of January and we were placed on probation. And um, there should be a little special bullet there between probation and the special report that's due March 15th. And that is that the, the board meeting is gonna have a special study session um, to discuss the report that needs to be turned in by March 15th. And that study session is gonna be on February 22nd. And basically the, the topic of that study session is going to be what the board needs to address in that special report that has to be submitted on the 15th. And Dr. Duran's gonna talk a little bit more about that. So that happened, so February 22nd will be the special board meeting. The report has to be submitted by March 15th. When, they when the board, when the district submits the report that is done by March 15th, the commission will review that report and make a decision at its June meeting as to whether or not the report the district submits has satisfied that particular concern. And so they have a couple of options in June. They can say, thanks for the report. We feel much better now. This is not a special concern. Or they can say, thanks for the report, but you kind of didn't answer everything, so we'd like to add that to the follow-up report that you need to write on, uh, that you need to submit on October 15th. Or they can say, we didn't really like this report. You're gonna need to report on it again by October 15th, and you're gonna have a visit about it. So those are the three options really that can come out of submitting that report. But we won't know that until June. And then the follow-up report, as you see there, similar to what we went through here this year, will be due to the commission on October 15th. And again, January 2013, the commission will review that report and decide whether or not the district has addressed those issues that were identified. And um, just, you know, again to say we're, we are fully accredited even though we're in on probation. We, throughout this whole process, we remain fully accredited, but we do have some issues that need to be followed up. And then our normal midterm report, we would have to write this whether we were on probation or not, is due October 2013. And just to let you know, at the January 2013 meeting, um, before our, our midterm report is due, the commission can make a whole host of decisions that could impact how that midterm report gets written. So we just have to wait and see. Um, but we know our next report from this college itself is due October 2013. So, that. Thank you, Erica. Let me answer one question that I know is probably on your mind. Uh, what does that place us in terms of the different levels? You know, you're fully accredited. You meet all standards. We got put on warning, which is one step below. Now we got put on probation, the second step. And the next step after that is show cause. If we, get, if we don't address these issues, that could be the next level. Show cause means why should, we, why should you keep your uh, accreditation? And if we don't address that, then the commission could say, uh, you are not meeting the standards, you haven't addressed it, You're, you will lose your accreditation. And so that's the worst case scenario. But that's the next step. We probably won't find out about that level until um, October, January, if they felt we've addressed all these issues. Now remember the reports that have to be done here, the one on March 15th has to address the special concern they have, and it was laid out in the letter uh, to everyone uh, that, that you saw about a single uh, board issue. And, um, and then the one on October 15th has to address all the seven 
recommendations again. So there's two different things going on here. It's my understanding, though, that right now, so when we were put on warning, we got two years to fix it. Now they've added this on in the January 2013 um, is when the two years are up. So, but now that we're put on probation, I don't think that gives us another two years to address it. Everything has to be addressed by this coming fall for the commission to make sure that um, we're doing it now. In January 2013, they could say, well, um, you show cause if we don't address it or uh, make it go back up to warning, possibly. Or they're saying, you've addressed everything. You've met all the conditions of accreditation. So these are some of the different options that can take place. It's up to them. So it's to our best interest, obviously, to deal with it. In the meantime, though, even though, uh, and I'm glad that they said we have addressed our um, issues at the campus level, we cannot just say, oh, we've addressed it. That's it. That's, we've done it. We've got to continue doing what we're doing because guess what? In 2013, when we have to follow up report, we will have to continue to say that we are um, addressing our issues. But this is going to be a continuing accreditation issue. And so when we, for the next round, and our self-study, we're going to have to be addressing the same CQI processes, making sure that we haven't fallen back. So it's up to us to just continue what we're doing, and I think we'll be fine. Um, in the letter, they reference the different standards. And most of you probably haven't looked at those. And I just wanted to give you, this is what they said, that the, what we are in violation of. The first one is an eligibility requirement. These are the basic standards that you must have even to be eligible for accreditation. And so they said it was standard um, uh, uh, three, requirement number three. And this specifically references the governing board <clears throat> and what they are supposed to be doing. Fundamentally, it has to do with the functioning and the responsibility in, uh, of the board for taking full fiduciary responsibility and quality, integrity, and financial stability. Uh, responsible for ensuring that student, the financial resources are uh, adequate. Membership um, is, is dealt with. The governing board uh, is supposed to be an independent policy making uh, body capable of reflecting constituent public interest. And then, you know, obviously in the standards, they show how we do all of that to make sure that this is indeed occurring. Um, there should be no conflict of interest with board members with regard to the college and their decision making. And that um, uh, they should be primarily acting as a governing body uh, to be able to address the district as a whole and dealing with academic and fiscal integrity. So that was the eligibility criteria they cited in the letter that they said we didn't meet. And then they went on to the different standards. So now you have the different standards in implementing it. As you all are aware, there are four standards we had to meet. Standard four deals with leadership and governance. And specifically, item B, the board administrative organization has to deal with the leadership um, of the board um, in being able to um, separate the responsibilities between the chief executive officer, the chancellor, and the board, and uh, making sure that we are clear in our roles and re uh, responsibilities, as Erica mentioned, about the mapping. What does the college do? What does the district do? And they felt we were inadequate in that, as identified earlier. The, the institution has a governing board that's responsible for establishing policies, again, they keep reemphasizing all of that. And that's why you saw some of those other recommendations. That, remember the policies and procedures one? We partially addressed it, but not quite yet. The governing board adheres to clearly defined uh, policy and selecting and evaluating the chief administrative officer. So that was the general. But then they went to the sub areas in this standard. G, H, and I. Specifically that the governing board's self-evaluating Processes for assessing board performance are clearly defined, and that was one of the 
this year, any of you ever attended board meetings, they do now um, a monthly board evaluation of the meeting. They have to fill out this survey uh, monkey and they, how did we do, et cetera. And then at the end of the year, annually, in a June board meeting, they do a comprehensive review of self-evaluation, which is part of the CQI process. Are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? How do they perform? Uh, H uh, references the board's um, code of ethics. It includes clearly defined policy for dealing with behavior that violates the code. And I think this is the reason the March 15th is um, report, special report, is addressing. They feel there was mis um, the behavior of the board is not what it should be, and uh, it rests with the board to address it. And the last is that the governing board is informed about and involved with all the accreditation processes. Uh, I'm not sure how we got that one in there because they had been involved. Yeah, I know through the whole process, presidents gave monthly updates to the board. And they knew what was going on and how each campus was doing with respect to our self-studies and the whole process. That one, I'm not sure exactly why they threw that one in there, unless it had to deal with board behavior and kind of linking all that in. Um, but beyond that, um, you begin to see these, uh, that's exactly what they were referring to and why we have to address some of those process, or the, the district has to address that. Um, but right now, I just want to make a comment that in terms of the district recommending that, um, in the cabinet, we are already discussing some of the recommendations, one through seven, at least the parts where the college is involved in helping identify the mapping more clearly. Um, we're looking at participatory governance processes and how the decision-making rolls up from us into the district and back uh, down again. So you were going to be working digital, uh, um, diligently in terms of what can we do with regard to the one through seven that involves the colleges. There are certain things that the district has to deal with by itself, and of course the board has to deal with those issues specifically germane to them. We can't tell them what to do. That, they've got to take care of that themselves. So that's kind of where we are right now. I can't tell you any much more. I think the um, February 22nd meeting is going to be an important one because this is where they're going to spend time looking at this very closely. And they have to ask themselves what are we going to, how are we going to address that and uh, to come up with ways to make sure. Because when I look at it, if I were um, a commissioner, and I was looking at this report that we have to submit by March 15th. The question I ask is, how will I know when the district meets this recommendation? What tells me that they've complied with the standard? I think that's been asked to the commission staff and the commission staff always asked, well, you have to figure that out for yourself. They never tell you what to do. But like the SLOs, they can help develop rubrics to give you indicators of what they make those judgments by. But in this one, I, I have been thinking about well, how would they know that? Do we, and by what actions do we have to take to demonstrate that this has been addressed? I think that's the big question um, that will have to be addressed at the February 22nd meeting um, for them to be able to do that. But until then, um, We'll see what happens in, by March. If you think you would like to see what the South City looks like, I would invite you to join that meeting on February 22nd to see how the dialogue takes place um, and how we're going to try to address that very question. In the meantime, we will be working with all the other seven that are germane to the district and us to help the district put together the response because we are part of that. And um, let me just say, too, that this is an entire... The issue with the board is the board issue. This is not any just one person's issue. Because remember, they collectively act as a board, and there are certain standards that they should be doing. So, um, and they have to address it accordingly.